Hey everyone, this is Ryan King and welcome to my very first art critique video on my channel. So almost a week ago I made a video asking you guys to send in your Blender artwork and I got about 20 people sending in their artwork and in this video I'm going to be critiquing about 10 of them. So I'm not able to critique all the artworks so if your artwork didn't make it into the video I do apologize but I'm not able to critique all of them just because some of the artworks I just really don't know how to critique. But thank you everyone for sending in your artwork. And if you'd like to be in the next critique video, I do have plans to make another critique video. So you can check the link in the video description. I made a Google form that you can fill out and submit your artwork. And I did want to apologize right up front if I pronounce your names wrong. Hopefully I won't pronounce your names wrong, but it's possible that I might pronounce your names wrong. And one more thing before we start, I just wanted to remind you that I'm not here to criticize your artwork or you as a person. I'm just here to give you feedback so that you can improve your artwork. And of course, all of my feedback are just my opinions, so feel free to disagree. All right, so this first render comes from Shallow Man, and they actually submitted two artworks. They submitted this really cool pizza render, and then they also submitted uh, this piano render right here. So I am actually going to be doing both of them. So let's do this pizza one first. So this is a really cool image. I definitely think it could be improved, though. So the first thing that I think could be improved is to use a better font. So this font right here, it looks like the default Blender font. And especially to me as a Blender user, I noticed that, that it looks like the default Blender font. And I think that's a little bit boring. So you could go onto a website like 1001fonts.com, and they have a bunch of free fonts. And you could find a font that works uh, really well and use that instead. Um, I just think the default Blender font is pretty boring, and I recognize it as the default Blender font, so I would fix that. Uh, but this glow here is really cool. I really like that. The next thing that I would do is to not use a texture. So I'm not sure if this is a procedural texture. It looks kind of like a procedural texture, or maybe you got this texture online. But the thing about pizza is uh, pizza has lots of little pieces. So it has the cheese, and then it has like the salami, and maybe it has like some veggies, like maybe it has uh, mushrooms or onions or things like that. And so if you just use a texture, it looks kind of flat. It doesn't look very realistic. So I just grabbed this picture of a Pixabay. You can see uh, like there is a pepperoni, slice of pepperoni right there. So what I think you could do instead is not use a texture and actually model the different pieces. So, so what you could do is you could start out by just making the bread and then maybe adding the cheese just as maybe a texture or something like that. And then you could go ahead and model the different things that you wanna add. So maybe model some actual slices of pepperoni and model maybe mushrooms or onions or whatever you wanna add on your pizza and then actually put those uh, 3D models onto the pizza. And I think that would make it look a lot more realistic. But this is definitely a challenging thing to do, um, making this look realistic. I think food is pretty hard to make in Blender. I would find this pretty challenging to like model uh, all the little bits of pizza pieces and stuff that you would add on. But if you want to go ahead and try that, if you want to improve the render, I think that would be a good thing to do. Now, the other thing is this soda can right here. Um, I grabbed this image from Pixabay. You can see the shape of this. It's very straight, and then it just kind of comes up. Um, this is quite a different shape. It's very small here. This is pretty long, and then it has this little uh, triangle kind of piece coming up here. I'm not sure if you had a specific bottle in mind. Maybe this does look like some kind of uh, bottle, but I think most like Coke cans look like this. So I would say just like remodel this if you were gonna improve this render. Also, you can make it a lot shinier because you can see the soda can is uh, metal, so it's really shiny. And you can see this looks just kind of like plastic. So I would say turn the roughness way down and turn the metallic up so that it actually looks like metal. Um, and then also right here, this looks a little bit stretched. So if you wanted to remodel that, you could, you know, place that on a little bit better. I think it's kind of squished down a bit and maybe stretched out a little bit. So I think improving that would really help. And then one more thing that I think could really improve this render is to add some sort of cloth texture um, for like the tablecloth here. So I definitely think that you could leave uh, the checkers. Maybe the checkers are a little bit long, so maybe make them a little bit smaller so that they're a square, um, but you could add some sort of cloth texture. Uh, this is on cc0textures.com. I just typed in cloth and uh, found this render here. So if you want to get like a free cloth texture and add that on, what you could do is the normal and roughness maps of this texture. You could use that on the cloth and then you could keep this as the color so that it still has um, the white and red checkered color. So thank you for sending in this render. And if you want to improve this, 
that's what I would do to improve this. So let's hop over to the second one now. Really nice 3D model. This is really cool. And you added your name right there. That's really cool. Um, I really like the textures that you used. Uh, it's just overall a really nice render. I definitely think it could be improved though. So there's a few things that I would do. One thing is that this background here, I would blur it because this is really black and I do like that, that it's black. It's kind of just makes it um, empty so that you can really focus on the 3D model. Um, and I really like this uh, ground wood texture, but if you could like add a depth of field on the camera. So if you go into the camera settings, select the camera and then go into the camera settings, you can add a depth of field and then make your focus be like right here here where the piano 3d model is and then on the f stop value you can turn that up and then blur that so that way it's going to focus on this and that's going to be blurred and it'll kind of fade into the background better you could also make this background texture farther out um, so that it blurs nicer uh, so yeah i would do that add a depth of field and then another thing that i would do is make this seat higher because right now it looks uh just bumped the microphone. Sorry about that. Uh, it looks really short right now. I feel like if I was going to sit on this, my knees would be coming like really high up. Um, we actually have a piano at our house. So I went downstairs and took a picture of our piano at our house. And you can see that um, the bench, it's pretty long and there's only a little bit of room where your legs would go before the piano keys uh, come up right here. And you can see here, there's a lot more space. So there's a lot of space here. It's pretty much the same amount. Maybe this is just a little bit longer. So this and this are pretty much the same. So I would say just go into edit mode, grab these vertices and just pull them up so that uh, maybe it's like this high, make it about like that high. So you can see between this one and this one, this one is just a little bit longer, but then this one, it's really short and this is really long. So just bring that up. I think that would help a lot. Um, also, I don't know what this little yellow thing is. I was thinking that might be a strap to like pull the cover. Um, you can see there's like a cover here. So I didn't know if that was like a strap to kind of hold the cover up or something. Um, you may know what it is. You probably modeled it. Um, I just don't know what it is. So you might want to remove it, but if it is there and if it's, if that's actually accurate, then you can just leave it. I don't know a whole lot about pianos. I don't play the piano, so I don't know too much about that. And then one really important thing that I also think would make this render a lot better is adding bevels. So again, on this real world reference, um, you can see that there's lots of bevels here. So what a bevel is, is just adding a little bit of extra geometry on the edges of the model. And then it adds that little, little shine there and just makes it a lot more realistic because in the real world, nothing is super perfectly sharp. So you can see there's like a bevel there and even places right here where it's just a tiny little bit. You can see there's that little shine right there where that bevel is. So you could add a bevel modifier on all these objects. You can see if you just look right here, it's very sharp and something just doesn't look right there. So I would say on all the objects here, like this is super sharp, um, but you can see right here, it's very smooth and round. And you can see there's that little reflection that really helps to make it look more photorealistic. Um, and the little tiny reflections right there on our piano. So I think the best way to do this would just be to add the bevel modifier on all these objects. Just add a tiny little bit there. You don't need to add very much, but just add a little bit on those edges. Um, and then I did notice that the texture right here is really stretched. So I would say uh, re UV unwrap that. What you could do is you could go to like front view. Um, by pressing like one on the number pad, go to front view, uh, tab into edit mode, and then just select that face and press U and unwrap project from view, and then just like scale it and make it the right size. And then just a couple more things. Um, you can see that there is the shadow right here and that's good, but the shadow is super, super sharp. And usually shadows are a bit soft, like the edges are a bit soft. So I would say make those shadows a lot softer. Um, and how you would do this, it really depends on what lighting you have. It looks to me like you might have um, a sun lamp or maybe some point lamps here, but what you can do, let me just hop into Blender. So here I am in Blender and I just added a cube and a sphere and then I have a sun lamp. You can see on the sun lamp settings, if I just zoom in here, here's the shadow and it's super, super sharp and that's not very realistic, um, at least most of the time in the real world, it's a lot smoother. So this angle right here, let me just make this a little bit bigger, the angle, you can turn this up and you can see once it's turned up, the shadow is a lot smoother. So if you're using a point lamp, how you do it, you can see there it is. You change the radius. So if you change this radius 
and make it a lot bigger, you can see that now the edges is really blurred, whereas when the radius is like almost zero, it's really sharp. That's what I would do on here. So whatever light you're using, try to just make the edges of the shadow a little bit more blurred. And then just one more thing, I can't really see any spaces in between the keys. So if you wanna go ahead and, I'm not sure if you modeled this just with one piece or if you model these individually, maybe it's just that the camera's too far away, but I'm not sure. So you might just wanna remodel this and just add a little bit of space in between those keys. And I think that would help a lot. So those are my critiques. I did have a lot of critiques, but this is really a nice render. So thank you for sending this in. Shalom man, this is a really awesome render, uh, but I do think it could be improved a bit. So if you want to improve it, that's how I would improve it. So the next one is from Zachariah O, and he sent in both of these artworks. So I thought I would just critique them both since they're somewhat similar. They have some of the same characters and stuff. And this is uh, really cool, some really cool characters. Um, you have some nice little like stories, you know, story in the scene, which I really like. I was thinking you could like make a short film or something with this. Uh, but yeah, really cool characters and you have a great idea here. I do think it could be improved, but overall I think this is pretty nice. So the first thing is to add a denoise node. So in the compositor, you can add a denoise node and that way you're gonna get rid of all the grain there because there is a lot of grain all around here and also down here. So if you added a denoise node, uh, that would really help just to get rid of all that noise. So on this one, I think that you could add some thickness because without the thickness, the box just kind of looks like paper or it looks really, really thin. It looks like it would just fall apart. Like it wouldn't even be able to hold the weight of those uh, batteries. So if you just add a little bit of thickness there, you, uh, you should be able to just add the solidify modifier. So select this object, go to the modifiers panel, add a solidify modifier, just turn that up and that way it'll just add a tiny bit of thickness there. I think that would really help. And then also, I'm not quite sure if this is metal. I think it probably is metal. Uh, the box does look metal, but I think it would probably be better if the box was just like plastic or cardboard or something. So I would change the material. And then the other thing that I would do on this render is to crop it because there's just some extra space here and I don't think it's really needed. And as far as the story goes, you did uh, name this image Shiny with a gift for Rusty. So I'm assuming that this robot's name is Shiny and then this robot's name is Rusty. When I actually first saw this render, I thought maybe he was giving the batteries to her. But then after reading the image name, it sounds like she's giving the batteries to him. So I wasn't really quite sure about the story. I thought he was gonna give the batteries to her. So maybe you could just play around with the composition and where the characters are so that everyone kind of understands exactly what's happening in the image. But yeah, these batteries, I really like the modeling. They look really realistic. They look just like batteries. And these characters are very cute. I really like the, the design. So very cute characters. And if you ever do something more with these, like you make a short film or something, you can definitely let me know. You could send me an email or comment in the YouTube comments or something like that. And I would love to see if you do anything more with these characters. So thank you, Zachariah, for sending these in. You got some really cool stuff here. And the next render is from Daniel. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your last name, but this is from Daniel. This is a super awesome render. I kind of feel like you should be giving me the critiques because this is a really nice render and I don't know if I could achieve something like this. I really like how you have these sunbeams coming into the scene and the little bits of dust there. The modeling is really well done. I really like how you have that shine there on the button uh, or that controller. It makes you just want to go up and you know, start playing with it. Super nice chairs here. Um, this is, just looks super realistic. The lighting is so good and realistic and you got all those little bits of detail like the, the cracks from maybe the glass shattering or something. Thank you for sending this in. This is really cool. I don't have very many critiques. Again, I feel like you should be giving me the critiques because this is really good. Um, but I do have a few things that I think it could be improved. So the first thing that I think could be improved is maybe adding a little bit of dirt and grunge here. Now you could argue that you don't want to add some dirt and grunge because maybe, you know, this all looks grungy, but then you want this to kind of stand out. So maybe you would want it to look really clean. Um, but I think adding just a little bit of dirt and grunge, maybe doing some texture painting uh, kind of around the edges and stuff would help to make it look a bit better. And then one other thing that I thought might help is if you added like some little stickers or something that were kind of falling off, like for instance, like maybe Pac-Man or something. I don't know what game uh, you had in mind that you would play on here, but I just picked a random game, an arcade game that I could think of. Um, so if you had like some stickers or something that were maybe getting all scraped off or something, 
I found these images on Pixabay just to show you kind of what I'm thinking. Um, these actually don't look like stickers though. I think these are actually like pieces of glass or something and maybe there's light shining through them. Maybe they're like plastic or something, but just adding something sort of like this in here, but then making it kind of like look like it's really old. Maybe it's kind of uh, falling down or maybe it's ripped or something and a few things here, but this is a super nice render really nice I like how it looks all grungy the composition is really good. So thank you Daniel for sending this in This is a really nice render all right And the next render comes from Roken and they sent in this really nice photorealistic image um, Really like this one. It's really realistic. I really like how you added all the little shine here and the glow and the water and the glass looks super realistic um, and, and all the detail there in this candle and these like Christmas balls are really nice and the glass is super realistic and you even added um, like some little details in here like fingerprints and stuff so this is really nice I really like this one as far as realism goes I don't think there's much to improve I think this is really nice it even looks like there's some fingerprints here and stuff so Really nice render. I do think that there's some things that could be improved. Um, I think the main thing is the composition. I feel like the composition could be improved a bit because I couldn't really decide whether I wanted to look at this one or this one or this one or this one. So, so right here, I just drew out um, a quick little thing from top view. So if you can imagine this from top view, this is how I would change it. Um, so what I would do is I would have the camera just where it is and I would have the candle in the front as the main thing. Um, this is of course just personal preference, but I think the candle is really cool and I really like like the detail you added in there. So I would put the candle in the center as the main focus and also another really good reason to make the candle the main focus is because of that bright flame and so it's bright and so it would be really good for the main focus. And then the two glasses, maybe you could move those behind them kind of where the candle is. And then these uh, Christmas balls or decorations, I think they're really cool. So what I would do is actually move them in front here or just move them up a little bit kind of in random positions like you did but maybe move them up a little bit and then these decorations right here this is super nice you added a lot of detail in here it looks really good um i don't really know how you made this but maybe you added a particle system or something but it looks really good and all those reflections right there really nice um now the other thing is i don't quite know what these things are um they almost look like metal but then i was thinking that they might be ice cubes it's a little bit odd. I don't think it looks quite like ice cubes. So maybe you could try to improve that. And then one other thing that I would do is this light here, this lighting, it's super bright. It looks like maybe you added an HDRI lighting, which is really good because it helps to make it look really realistic. But there's these reflections here on the, like the smooth marble table and it's really bright. And I feel like um, once you get rid of it, you can see this is what I did here. So I just, uh, I'm in credit here and I just kind of drew over that. And you can see once you get rid of that, you kind of notice how glaring that white there is because you know we are drawn to things that are brighter we are drawn to light and so that just being so bright I feel like it just kind of took away from the image and I also added just a tiny little vignette so just making this a little bit darker on the edges and then just added a little bit of glow to that candle so I don't know what you think about this but I think this would be a lot better it really makes the image look a bit nicer you can really focus on that candle and this stuff here so how you could fix this is if this is an HDRI you could rotate the HDRI and make that really bright light coming from a different angle or maybe like put a like a plane right here to block out the light or something like that um but yeah i think that would definitely look a bit nicer but thank you roken for sending this in really nice image super photorealistic this is really good and the next artwork comes from aural so i really like this one i really like uh low poly stuff this is really cool and i really like uh the detail that you added in here and also that you added in like the little roof there, like if it's raining, uh, this is really cool. The little details in here and the little bricks. Um, and I really like that you added some bricks, some places, but not all over the place, kind of like a suggestion thing. But I do think there's definitely room for improvement. So the first thing that I think would improve this image is if you lowered the camera, I think it would be better if you made it look like you were kind of standing in the scene and kind of looking up at the house. So I think lowering the camera would be nice. And then the next thing that I would change is um, the grass here. It looks really big. Um, if a person is this big, then that grass is pretty long. So I would make the grass a little bit smaller. And also the grass looks pretty similar. It looks like you made just a few different variations of grass and then used a particle system. Um, and they look very similar. Like I can kind of tell that a lot of these uh, bits of grass are the same. So I would say add more variety to this grass. And also um, in the particle system, if you turn on the rotation and rotate it around, uh, you can add a random rotation and that way it'll look a bit more random. 
And then I also think that adding in some other stuff, like maybe some rocks or flowers or something like that would make it look nicer. Um, maybe even adding a little bit of lumpiness to the ground or the dirt. Um, but yeah, I think just adding in a little bit more stuff, maybe some little animals or something would look really cool and make this uh, a really cool image. And then also um, adding a background, I think would really help. And also adding like some sky and clouds. So if you made the uh, camera a little bit lower, then maybe you could add some trees in the background. Um, maybe have like a blue backdrop with some clouds or something. And also you, maybe you could add some mountains or something just to fill out the back of the image, just so that it feels like it's more in an actual area. Cause I can see that there's a plane right here and then it kind of turns over and you can see that there's the edge of the plane. So just adding in a background, maybe curving the background a little bit down, adding in some more trees, um, some sky, some clouds, maybe some mountains, and all of that would make it feel like you're in a real world instead of just on this plane here. And then the last thing that I would do is add a depth of field. Um, so you can see that like back here, I don't know if you added a depth of field. It doesn't really look like you did though. So like this tree and the background here, it could be blurred a little bit and also like the clouds and stuff if they were farther away. So if you just select the camera and go into the camera settings, then you should be able to add a depth of field. Um, you can make the focus this house right here and then just turn up the F stop a little bit to blur the background. But very nice render. This is really cool. I really like this uh, world you're creating here. So thank you, Arl, for sending this in. All right, and this next render comes from Ben. This is a super awesome render. I especially love Mars and anything about Mars, Mars exploration. So this is really cool. And you also sent me an animation. So I'm just going to play that animation. Let's just watch it here. So this is a really cool animation of this uh, drone that you designed. Um, the only critique that I have about the animation is I feel like uh, these blades here should be rotating a bit faster, actually a lot faster, because I feel like with how fast they're rotating, there wouldn't be enough lift to actually rotate the drone. But yeah, this is super awesome. If you look in here, you can see the little bits of detail of like the um, landing gear closing and and you have the little camera that's rotating around. It looks just like a drone camera, so super nice. I really like this design, but I do think this could be improved a bit, so let's just go over that. Um, so the first thing that I think could be improved is these rocks I think could be a lot more bumpy because they seem pretty smooth. You can see without this, they're pretty smooth, and rocks, especially rocks on Mars or another planet, I think would be pretty lumpy and bumpy, so I'd say uh, make them a lot more bumpy. And then also I think you should add some patches where there's more rocks and some patches that there's less rocks. Um, this is super awesome. I did notice that you added like a little bit of dust. The little small rocks right here have just a little bit of dust on uh, the bottom of them, kind of like they got a bit dusty from the ground. That's super awesome. A really tiny detail, but it does add a lot. So really good job on that. But I do think that the rocks are a little bit too even. It looks like there are some patches where there are less rocks and some that are more, but I think maybe making those patches a little bit more strong, maybe still having some rocks in some areas, but maybe just making a bit more patches. And then also I think these big rocks, I think maybe adding a bit more. So adding some here and here would add a bit more variation. And then also I think adding a little bit more detail. So you can see I just drew in here like drone 06. I drew some little plating and stuff. Of course, this is totally personal preference if you want to have kind of a a very smooth futuristic look that's totally up to you but i think adding a little bit of detail maybe some metal plates and stuff just some more sci-fi detail would make them look a bit nicer and then one more thing that i think would really help to make this image look awesome is making the lighting better so this is actually pretty realistic to mars um a lot of the, like sci-fi renders and stuff have mars very orange and uh, kind of smoky and foggy. And sometimes Mars is like that, but if you actually look at real pictures of Mars, Mars is actually blue a lot of the time. So this is actually really realistic. It looks just like Mars. What I think would make this uh, look a lot better is if you added a sunset scene. So I really think this improves the render. If you added like a, like a sunset or a sunrise on Mars, made that really glowing. And then if you added like a rim light, so add some lights behind these and that way it'll look like the sunlight is shining through here and just lighting up the side there. You could add a glare in the compositor and just light that up. And that way there'd be a little bit more of a shadow here. It would make it look a bit more contrasty because without this, everything seems pretty blank. And during the daytime on Mars, that's probably how it would look. It probably wouldn't be super strong. Um, but if you had like a, a morning or a sunset or something, you could add, you know, that would add some uh, shadows on the rocks. There'd be little shadows on the rocks here. If you added the main light coming from here, you can see without that, the lighting looks a bit boring. And then with it, 
Uh, I think it looks makes the lighting look a lot more interesting. But really nice render. I really like this. Uh, it looks it really looks like Mars and it looks really realistic. Adding in all the different rocks that you added, like the variation of rocks, I think really uh, make it look good. And I like the orange sand that you added there. So a very nice image, Ben. Thank you for sending this in. And this next one comes from Gorin. So Gorin made this super nice image. I really like this. This is really cool, a really fun scene to look at. You got this super awesome uh, robot here. Um, I also noticed you have the Hobbit book right there. That's super awesome. I'm a, I'm a big Lord of the Rings fan. And also I noticed that you have the SpaceX Dragon Capsule right there, like a model of it in the room. That's super cool. And then looks like there's another Hobbit book right there. So really cool. I'm a big fan of SpaceX and Lord of the Rings. So that's really cool. I do think this has some room for improvement though. So let's go over those. So the first thing is, I think this image right here, we as humans are drawn to faces. And so I think this kind of is a distraction to the rest of the scene because it's a real image of a face. So I think just using something else, I just drew some shapes in here. So if you want to like maybe change that to just something else, um, because I think that's just a little bit distracting to have a real face right in there. So if you just want to change that, I think that would really help. And then I think the main thing that really could be improved is the texture here on the couch. So you can see here that there's like some different seams and stuff. Um, you did say that you used Blender Guru's tutorial to do this. Um, I actually haven't done that tutorial yet. I really want to do it. I started it, but then I got busy with other stuff and I haven't finished it yet, but I do want to do Blender Guru's couch tutorial. But you can see here that there's some seams here in the texture. So I think improving that would be good. And then also I think adding in some more detail to the cloth. So this is from uh, cc0textures.com. I just grabbed this image here. It's a free texture. And you can see that it has lots of little detail right here. So if you want to like add something like that, I can't quite tell if you added some super tiny cloth detail, but if you haven't, maybe adding that in would really help. And then the other thing is that um, I feel like the texture is way too busy. So when you're looking at this, um, the texture, it has so much detail and it's so busy that I feel like it takes away from the scene. Like it kind of is distracting. So I would say use some kind of cloth texture that's a lot more calm and soft. And that way you're going to focus your attention a lot more on the robot. Yeah, because I feel like just all the little details in here, all the different colors is pretty distracting. And then another thing I saw, it looks like the uh, robot's hinge is kind of going through the foot there. So that would be pretty easy to change if you just want to like take that kind of rotate it a bit over. And then just one more thing that I think could be improved. Um, I'm not quite sure if this is a reflection from the main light in the room, um, but I think just having a big white circle right there, it might be a reflection from the glass. Um, but if you can get rid of that, I think that would help. Um, it just is a bit glaring. So that's how I would improve this render, but super nice. It's really photorealistic. You have a lot of detail right here. I really like the Hobbit and the SpaceX thing. And this is really awesome. A lot of nice detail in here. You got some different stuff here, like the pencils and some tea. So thank you, Gorin, for sending this in. This was really nice and it was fun to take a look at. And the next render comes from Blake. So Blake sent in this really cool um, image of kind of like a piece from a house. Um, I made something sort of like this. I made a low poly one though. This is kind of low poly. You can see the little bits right here, low poly, whereas this one isn't quite low poly. It's a bit smoothed out, but yeah, really cool. I really like these kind of little scenes. Um, if you've seen Polygon Runway on YouTube, Polygon Runway has some really cool uh, scenes kind of like this. So the first thing that I think could be improved is taking away this car image right here. So I would add maybe just like a small little picture right here, or maybe just adding in something like maybe a door or maybe a window or something like that. Um, I feel like this car image, because it's so realistic, it kind of takes away from the rest of the scene. You kind of just want to look at this because it's kind of like an artwork within itself. So change that to something else like this. I think that would just make the image look a little bit better. And then I also think that there's a little bit of a problem with the smooth shading. You can see right here, it looks like you use smooth shading for this box, but it, there's a little bit of an issue right here. So what I would do is bevel these objects. And then when you have the smooth shading, it's going to look a lot better because beveling them adds a bit more geometry to them. And that way there's not going to be that little dark area and dark area right there. Um, and then beveling like all the objects pretty much because beveling them will make them look a lot more realistic. And then also I think this could use some sort of texture. So maybe like a marble texture or a concrete texture or something, um, I think would really help to make this image look better. 
and specifically you are wondering about the plant, how to make that look a bit better. Um, you're also wondering how to make the TV more reflective and also how to make the couch look a bit more realistic. Um, so for the TV here, I would say this material, you need to turn down the roughness to almost zero. And that way, if the roughness is turned down, it's going to reflect the different stuff uh, around it. And then to make the couch more realistic, um, I think adding a texture would definitely look good. This is a texture from CC0 Textures. I've been using this in quite a few of the critiques in this video. Uh, this is the Fabric 030 on cc0textures.com. Um, so if you want to grab a texture like this and put it on, that would make it look a lot more realistic. You could also go into sculpt mode and sculpt some folds in the couch. And then also you could add some legs to the couch because I feel like if I sat down on this, my legs would just be way up and they would be too high or I'd have to like uh, have my legs way out here. So if you added some legs on the couch, I think that would just make it look a lot nicer and that way you could sit down. So just if you just wanted to model just some simple legs, just like that with the, like maybe model a cube, extrude it out and then make it just like maybe a black shiny material, I think that would really help. And then another thing is to sharpen up these edges. You can see I just grabbed uh, this picture from Pixabay. You can see that these edges are a lot more sharper than this. They are smooth and kind of round, but they are a lot sharper. So if you want to add some loop cuts in here and make that a bit sharper, it's just a little bit smooth kind of here and here. And then you were wondering about how to make the plant better. You said that you used a particle system. So what I think you should do is look online or look around in your house and find a specific type of plant that you want to make. And that way you can look for textures for it and just make a plant that's very specific to a real plant in real life. And it'll look more realistic that way. If you wanted to model something like this, I would say, uh, go onto some texture websites and look for some, uh, leaf textures. And once you find a leaf texture, I would say, go ahead and actually model the whole leaf and stem and then like duplicate them and kind of change them around. And then also just adding more object in the scene would really help. So I drew like a little book here. I drew like a lamp and also some little plugs to like plug in the lamp and the TV, just filling in the scene with more stuff I think would really help. And I do think that the lighting could be improved. So if you want to use like an HDRI lighting or just add more lights, I feel like it's a bit dark here. I feel like this is probably like the main area that you're going to be looking at and it's pretty dark. There's a lot of shadows here, but just generally making the whole thing a bit brighter because it does seem a little bit dark. And then I also think cropping this would make it look nicer so that you don't have any extra room here. So if you want to render this out as like a square image or just render it out and then crop it, uh, I think that would look a bit better. And then you were also wondering how to make the uh, mug look a bit better because it looks like the mug is kind of upside down. I think what you should do is add a bevel. So if you add a bevel, then that way there's going to be some thickness right here. And then hopefully there will be a shadow uh, right in there. I can't really tell for sure because it's so small, but I think the issue might be that you just um, deleted the top face and that red there is actually the back of the mug. But because there's no thickness right there, it just looks like it's a flat surface. So thank you, Blake, for sending this in. And this next one comes from Limitless Productions. So they actually sent two in, um, but I decided to critique this one. So this is super awesome. There's a lot of really nice detail here. All these little bits of detail here, the gears and everything. The texture painting is really nice. I really like this model. It's really cool. There is a few ways that I think it could be improved though. Uh, so the first thing is the lighting. So I feel like it's pretty dark and a bit hard to see the model. So if you added like a rim light, um, I just drew this on in Krita. Um, maybe if you had like a light behind it, that would give like a bit of a rim light and then maybe adding like a glare or something. Uh, and then just generally making the main light a bit brighter because I feel like it's just a little bit hard to see the model. I mean, it doesn't have to be glowing this much. I just kind of drew that in to make it a little bit brighter. But yeah, I think adding a rim light and a bit brighter of a light would make it look a bit better. Um, now, something that I noticed here is that it looks like the letters are floating a little bit. So maybe if you could add like a shrink wrap modifier to push that onto the metal, or maybe you could like texture paint that in or something. And then I think it would also look better if you added a motion blur to the propellers here. So these little propellers here on the drone, um, it looks like the drone is flying because there's no ground here that it's sitting on. So if you actually animated these and then turned on motion blur, then when you render this out, it would be really blurred. And then also, this is just personal preference, but I think if you duplicated these and put them on the other sides too, so you had four instead of two, I think that would really help because I feel like it'd be a little bit unstable just to have two. So I think if you duplicated these and added them here, I think that'd be really cool. 
So those are my critiques for this render, but this is a super nice model, especially I wanted to point out these here. This is really cool. All the little details in here, really nice details. I really like all the little details and everything that you added in here. So, so really nice. Thank you. Limitless productions for sending this in. And the last artwork that I'm going to critique in this video is this super awesome toy train render. And this is by Stan. So thank you, Stan, for sending this in. This is a really nice render. I really like this. It just is very nice to look at. I really like how uh, the background is very smooth and it just is a nice smooth transition from the ground to the wall and i really like that it has really soft lighting it's very nice uh, i do think it could be improved though so one thing that i think could be improved on it is um the legos seem a little bit short so i looked at reference images of real legos and they seem to be a little bit uh, higher up so i feel like these legos are just a little bit too small so so i think just modeling them a little bit longer would make them look better and then also, um, if there was like a, a kid playing with the train toy and he like moved the train, um, the other parts of the train, the middle one and then the back one wouldn't move along with it because they're not connected. So if you just like modeled some wood pieces, maybe of these connecting, I think that would help a lot. And then also it looks like you made a procedural texture, um, a procedural wood texture. It does look pretty nice. It definitely is a really nice procedural wood texture, but I think adding a real texture would be a lot nicer. So if you want to go onto some texture website and download a wood texture and add on an actual wood texture, I think that would make it more realistic because it looks like you are going for realism, maybe a little bit stylized, but this is very nice. And I like how you made this darker. That's really cool. It, it looks like a darker type of wood. So very nice work. I really like this. And then one last thing, I think that maybe cropping this a little bit shorter would be better because there is a bit of extra room up here and on the edges. So I think cropping that down uh, would make it look nicer. But again, really nice render. Uh, it's super realistic. I really like the uh, plastic material that you gave to this and the reflections right here. And the lighting is very soft and nice. So thank you, Stan, for sending in this render. It's really nice. I hope that this helped you guys to improve your artwork and become better artists because that's why I'm doing this. I'm not here to criticize anyone or their artwork. I'm just here to give some feedback so that hopefully you guys can become better artists and make better artwork. So thank you everyone so much for watching. If you'd like to be in the next critique video, uh, there's going to be a link in the video description to the Google form that I made and you can submit your artwork through there. But thank you for watching and I will see you in a future video.